Hey, hello traders. Uh, this is Dave with the Compass Options Live Trading Room. And uh, this is just the uh, weekly Periscope video. I got to kind of recap uh, last week or so uh, and also uh, do another review of January 2023. I did it last week, but a lot of times there's new members and uh, I just want to recap that again. So we'll just do the Periscope review right now. Hope everybody's having a great weekend and uh, looking forward to see everybody in the room on Monday. Um, and first, the disclaimer, all signals and trading opportunities we provide here, orally, written, or electronically, are for educational, educational and demonstration purposes only. Trading is very risky, so you should never trade with more money than you can afford to lose. And neither myself or right line trading are licensed financial advisors, so we won't be giving financial advice. All right, so here's a recap. This is, um, this is the January recap right here, January 2023. Um, detail of a lot of the trades that we took, not everyone, but uh, most of the trades that we took here. Uh, and um, I think you've probably all seen these. We had a, a loser here in ENPH, but we took ENPH three times and had two winners in it. A uh, nice 55% win in, in the STC debit spread and uh, this Amazon lottery we took for a nice 40% gain. Uh, some pretty nice trades here. Um, here's the rest of January here. We had Rivian. We took a beating on Rivian on one trade. Uh, all of all of manu electric car manufacturers uh, went went against us and won one overnight, so that kind of hurt us. And we also had a little loss in AXP. But other than that, uh, the, we had a pretty consistent uh, win record here in January. Um, Parry was a nice 49% winner and 41% um, winner in Carvana. Again, from 13 to 131, we had 42 wins and five losses. Uh, and that's 89% win rate. And um, if you would place $2,000 investment in each trade that we uh, we had in the room, then you would have been up about $10,000. So a pretty good pretty good month. And uh, uh, February is starting off a little uh, weak. We've had a we've had a couple of losers in February. Took a 28% loss in Gilead. Uh, we took a 68% loss in Intel. This was kind of a, a hurt here. Um, it was looked good, all the, all the semis were going up uh, and it just reversed real hard on us overnight along with the rest of them. It broke down below what we would consider a support level or what I would consider a support level technically. So I had to take it off and actually it kept on going down even further. So it would have even been worse on that one. But we did have a, a nice win at BABA for 11%, a nice 37% win in Uber. Uh, Disney, a nice 36% win. We finally got 14% out of uh, out of C that we pretty much had to we had to stay with for seemed like for a couple of weeks. Uh, Skyworks nine percent and net a uh, nice twenty eight percent profit on the time spread. And we get a few more trades on right now that are underwater. Uh, we'll have to uh, work with them uh, this coming week. But I think you know uh, all in all the trading has been tough, but uh, we 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 should be able to maintain our usual eighty five ninety ninety two percent win rate uh, over the February. We'll, we get back on track. Like I said, it's been a kind of kind of a choppy, tough market to trade, but uh, but all in all, I'm satisfied with it. We're always going to have some losses, but our win rate uh, will uh, consistently uh, stay around 90%. So, and uh, I don't know what that is. Yeah, I guess this is a. Uh, let me see. This is, I guess, yeah. This is a the uh, same thing again. This is a. a the last page of the uh, of the 212, uh, the uh, January 2023. So I get that repeated in there. This is uh, I'll leave this in here. This was the uh, my Excel spreadsheet on the trades we took in January, all of them. Um, and so you you can look at that if you'd like. Um, again, we've got uh, quite a few trades in there, and you can see all of those with the. Uh, this is a result of they uh, had two thousand dollars invested in each one of the trades. Carried overnight means obviously we we get into it during the day and we had to we kept it till at least overnight. Uh, it could be just one overnight. It could be five overnights. It just I just identify which stocks we took and we we kept overnight. So you see a lot of a lot of overnight trades. So for folks on PDA uh, on the uh, uh, pattern day trade or PDT rules, uh, these overnights would be would be useful for you because it's not going to impact your uh, your uh, day trades. Okay, um, it's just a, a overview of the spy on the daily chart. Again, we're still um, we, we broke uh, we did break uh, above the the uh, wedge that we were talking about a couple of weeks ago. 
but we've pulled back again here. And um, right now we're below the eight exponential moving average. We are above all the moving averages here. So we've got a nice bullish move up here. You can see this nice bullish move up off of this bottom. We put in a new high um, that's here, but there's, there's some other highs above that that we, we haven't beat. And it's coming back down again a little bit right now. So uh, we'll, see, uh, we'll see where we go with that. Excuse me, I did a cough. <laughs> uh, so anyway, so that's the SPY. That's, uh, again, we, we don't really know if we're going to re retrace back to the 50-day or the 200-day moving average or if we're going to turn around and break to the upside. We do have the CPI on Tuesday morning. That's going to be a fairly um, uh, a fairly large catalyst for the market. So uh, it's kind of talking about the consumer price indexes, which will be uh, telling us what inflation is. It makes a big difference to the Fed. Uh, so that's why it'll be such a, a, an important number on Tuesday morning. Now, just some charts here. We've seen a lot of these, but a lot of people that are new haven't seen these. Uh, this is a, a, a five-minute chart on Tesla. And again, for anybody who's not familiar with how we trade here, what we're looking for is this is the compass system what you're looking at right here that's on thinkorswim. And uh, all green here tells us that the institutions are buying Tesla. As long as we've got green, especially on the this, this line right here, which is the multi-time frame uh, momentum, a multi-time frame, the gear oscillator, which is a momentum for a multi-time frame, this is momentum for the current time frame. And the more green you've got, the, the bullish, more bullish it is. And you can see right here that we took Tesla. <clears throat> These are what's called Hike and Archie candles. And Hike and Archie candles are, are, are a nice way to see the trend. You can see this nice trend moving up. And you notice there's no tails on any of these candlesticks right here because Hike and Archie actually uses two candles to create a candle. Uh, and as long as the stock is moving up, it's going to take a lot of the noise out of the out of the, the uh, out of the candlestick. So you can see when you've got flat bottoms that you've got a, a bullish a bullish trend here. And we have what's called a high connection reversal, which is when you have wicks and tails like that, and you go to a flat bottom and and more flat bottoms. That's a bullish reversal, a high connection reversal, and uh, move this right up. And again, spy here. We can see what it looks like on a. This is a high connection candle on the spy for a downside. Uh, this is a little bit of a different chart setup that I've got. This is looking for the Bollinger Band width because we're looking for the Bollinger Band width to be expanding, which it usually does when you come out of compression. And this would be our entry right here. You notice you've got a wick in the tail, flat top, bearish high Kanachi reversal, band widths expanding. The Laguerre down here, which is our momentum, has gone from green to yellow, telling us that the uh, the sellers are in and uh, they're, they're starting to sell. Uh, the institutions are starting to sell. You jump in right here and you write it down. And one thing to always be looking for is when, you, when you're when you in a trend, watch for the candlesticks to start to get small. When you get start to get small ranges on the candlesticks, that a lot of times will indicate a, a reversal is coming and it's best to uh, take your profits when you get that. You notice that the, that the, the bones of bandwidth is starting to recede here as well. So that's where you get out of that trick. And this is another spy trade that we took. And again, just for those who aren't familiar with the compass system, right here, the compass system goes from blue, which is which is bullish on the current time frame, to yellow, which is bearish on the current time frame. The multi time frame was already bearish, so we're getting institutional selling here. So once the institutions also are selling on the current time frame, then this is where you would get into the trade. This pink line right here is called the volume weighted average price, VWAP. And you always want to be trading short when this price is below the VWAP. You don't want to be trading short when the price is above the VWAP. It's a very important level that most institutions use uh, for their for their trading. So uh, right here is where you would get in here is, is the stock breaks down below the VWAP. You can just write it down. You see it just keeps on going down. And then here we are with the small candles again. Momentum's being lost. We're out. And you can see the, the current time frame uh, momentum went to blue here to bullish right here on this candle here, but we'd be out right here as it starts to, as the momentum starts to fade. Um, QSR, again, I like to show this every week. This is a daily chart. This is what we, what we try to do is we try to align the daily chart with the five minute chart. So when we see a nice bullish daily chart like this with a, with a, a breakout of a dynamic compression zone, which is what this shaded area is, 
all of our all of our compass system is telling us on the daily chat this is bullish you've got blue or green all the way across the board qsf pops up that tells us well, if we switch to the five minute this is what we see and we since we have a good strong daily bullish chart and we now have a bullish five minute chart this is where we would want to take the trade and basically what we're looking for is obviously the compass system to go to all green or blue and green and this is where it takes place right here because we had yellows in here reds over here um, we could take it in here but um you, you could take it right in here off of this off of this uh this blue move right here but it's moving right along the the, the 15. so anywhere in here is is fine uh, but this is where i would have taken it right here on this green as you start to pop up and again you can see the nice move to the upside it's very predictive when you've got green across the board that the price is going to go up it may not go up on the next candle but it's going to go up in the near future and this just rode up very nicely and went right up here and this is where we would get out you notice that the multi time the current time frame with gear here the momentum went to yellow which means there's some selling coming in you can see that in the candlestick and again the candles get smaller that's where you want to get out this is qsr on the, the dominator program which is the dominator system which shows us what the market internals are and for us to get our highest highest probability trade setups what we want is we want the dominator system to be uh, lined up with our with our compass system uh, in the same direction with the same buy signals and that gives us uh, that gives us uh, the highest the very highest probability trade setups a lot of times the the dominated system won't be giving you buy signals because it would be neutral uh, but right here we started to get a buy signals in qsr which is gives us even more uh, more reason to join that particular trade <clears throat> excuse me a second get a cough All right, sorry about that. <clears throat> now, this was an ENPH trade that we took short. This is a daily chart, dynamic compression right here, everything going yellow or red. So, as we can short this, and this is where we actually get into this, and we took it overnight. And it kept on down. We didn't ride it the whole way down, but we could have. We wanted to stay in it, but it was a very nice trade. The market's been very choppy. It's hard to hold things for too very long. Tesla, another beautiful trade here. Um, as you can see, uh, as everything goes red right here, yellow and red, you need a Tesla right here as it breaks down off the 15. One of the things we always look for is to try to enter a trade. Uh, we buy a support, sell it resistance. This uh, 15 EMA, this red line right here, is a resistance line. So we're buying right here on this, this pop out of the box signal, which basically is telling us we're breaking down from compression. This is where you would get in because you've got either yellow or red across the board, jump in right here, and you see we're getting small candles. So you could have got out and taken a profit, uh, but there was really no reason to based on the compass system here. And then it just went down a few more candlesticks, and then you would get out over here as you start to get some, some green starting to lift, and you go to a red to blue here. So time to take profits right there. <clears throat> Another good one, we had KHC, we took it overnight. Again, we took it here uh, as everything went green breaking out of dynamic compression didn't do much the next day but it popped up the, the, the second day we had it and we took profits in it right there stz another very nice short this we had a very nice short in this one we did a day trade on this but just notice this candle right here this is where we shorted it uh it was on the daily chart it was lined up very very bearish see all the red across the board very bearish setup we took it on the five minute chart and um and made nice profits in that one <clears throat> UNH, another one we took a nice nice gains in here. Um, this one came down out of dynamic compression. Everything was yellow or red. Let's jump right in here, keep the trade overnight, make a nice profit in it. So again, I'm just trying to point out the compass system, what it's telling us here. Easily shows us when the when the institutions are in uh, buying or selling or not doing anything. If we've got neutral, then you know, if we've got mixed signals like we have right here, it's telling you that there's really no reason to even be trading this. Uh, because the institutions are not lined up, they're not not all the time frames uh, are are aligned, so that the institutions are not in there heavily buying or heavily selling. <clears throat> Data general, another nice one we had here. This was a beautiful one. Everything went red or yellow right here, right below the VWAP, and just just ba basically just came down most of the day. Um, this was till 11:40. This was like an hour trade, but nice trade off of that VWAP. 
uh, and just take it right down like that. In general, everything stayed red, bearish all the way, and we could have stayed in this one. I just wanted to point out the the how important these these compass system information is that we've got. We know that the institutions are selling across the board here, and we we know where they're going to drive the price down. We just we want to be sure that that those kind of setups. <clears throat> All right, so we'll just cover briefly the highest probability trade setups. Uh, we try to use them. The very, very highest are going to have the dominator signals and background color aligned. So on, on the dominator, if we've got a green background, it's bullish. Our pink background is bearish. And if we have a, a buy signal um, with a green background, that's a, that's a very strong uh, uh, market internal setup. And if the compass system aligns, uh, when being also bullish, then you've got an extremely high setup. Uh, we want to be uh, taking trades, breaking out of dynamic compression zone is one of the ways. We also would be buying off of VWAPs when it bounce off of VWAP, bounce off of 15 EMA. In other words, what this is saying is buy a support, sell it resistance. I just wanted to give an example, but buy it support, sell it resistance. If there's a hike in IT reversal candles, that gives us more confirmation of the uh, of the reversal. <clears throat> we only, only want to take uh, breakouts in the same direction as the stock's current trend. So if you get a stock that's that's uh, bearish on the day, and all of a sudden you get a, a breakout of dynamic compression to the upside, but the stock is red for the day and has a downtrend, you don't want to be taking that. Those are well, those are what's called, called counter trend trades, and we don't want to take any counter trend trades. <clears throat> the reason for that is the overall trend is, has been set by the institutions. So when when you get a counter trend move like that, in other words, you're trying to pick a bottom and, and see this this short stock reverse. To the upside. This is where the retail traders come in and try to catch the bottom. But the trend has been bearish by the institutions. And if you don't have any indication that the institutions are actually in there buying at that point, which you usually don't, then what's happening is the retail traders are, are trying to catch the bottom. And what's going to happen is the institutions are going to come back in and start selling again um, after the retail traders come in and try to drive it up. And they're going to, they're going to just take the money away from the the retail traders. You don't want to be trading with the retail traders. You want to be trading with the institutions. <clears throat> and you'd also want to be trading in the same direction as the current market trend if there is a trend in the market. So on bullish trending days, we want to be looking at mostly longs. In bearish trending days, we want to look, be looking at mostly shorts. Um, and we would look at, you can tell that from the watching the SPY index and also by looking at the, uh, the dominated system telling you what the overall market internals look like. And obviously, we want the current, uh, the modified Laguerre for the current time frame, or the momentum for the current time frame on the uh, on the compass system to be aligned. So we want that to be green for bullish, or blue, and red or yellow for bearish. And it's the same thing for the multi time the, the multi time frame uh, momentum. That's one of the other lines on the compass system we looked at. We want those to be the same color. Uh, Bollinger band expanding is also helpful. And you want to select stocks, select stocks that have relative strength or relative weakness to the SPY. Um, it's you're much better to be trading stocks that have relative strength, relative weakness to the SPY, because of the fact that if uh, if if the SPY reverses on you, if the market starts to turn, the stocks that have relative strength or relative weakness are going to hold their gains, or or at least the, their losses will be much more. Uh, under control because of the fact that they're outperforming the SPY. So a SPY reversing is not going to hurt a relative strength or relative weakness stock as, as much as it would the stock that is not does not have relative strength. So we, we look for those. <clears throat> uh, if it's going to be a swing trade, the daily must match the the, uh, the uh, five minute as well. I use this for basically all my trades. When I take a trade, the first thing I do is look at the daily chart. I, I, if I'm going to be long a stock, I really want the daily chart to be uh, also bullish. Because if if it's not, you don't have the flexibility to stay in the trade. If the trade goes against you uh, during the day, you really have to get out. You can't really stay in it because since the since the the daily um, is is not bullish as well, then you basically can't hold it overnight. You're you're not lined up for a, for an overnight long, so you have to get out of the trade. So you don't have the flexibility. So generally, most of my trades, almost all, will have the daily chart and the five minute chart aligned. Uh, the pock out of the box signal also adds conviction to the trade. And um, you want to have patience. Waiting for waiting for compression break is going to reduce the re risk substantially. Buying a support, selling at resistance 
is going to reduce the risk substantially. In other words, don't be chasing after momentum stocks uh, as, they, as they shoot up or shoot down because you're much too likely to get trapped in there and you don't have really a good stop level to, uh, to get out at. Okay, and, and again, the, the compass dominated combo, which we've, we talked about all the time, if you've got, if you've got a, a bullish uh, dominated system with, in other words, a green background and a buy signal, um, then you've got a really strong um, market internals to go by. And if the compass system lines up with the same thing, in other words, bullish on the compass, bullish on the on the dominator, that's those are the really high probability trade setups, and vice versa for the red for the, set, the bearish, of course. And it's also usually possible to take larger trade size, and possible to stay in the trade longer. It really kind of depends on the market. You don't really want to be trying to stay in trades long if you don't have a trending market because you're likely to get reversals. So, and during the day in the room, I'm always talking about what the if we if we've got a choppy day or if we've got a trending day or if we've got a low probability day, uh, it's it's important to take your profits quickly and not stay in trades too long. And the best entries, of course, uh, when the dominator aligns, is bounces off the 15, bounce off the VWAP, break out of dynamic compression. Uh, any any good support resistance level uh, that confirms uh, stocks uh, uh, is is reversing or bouncing. Uh, just a kind of quick recap of what what we're trying to uh, what I'm trying to accomplish in the compass, compass compass options trading room. What the goals are? I want to help all members become consistently profitable under all market conditions. Market was terrible in 2022. A, a year long bear market. Haven't had one of those in a long time, uh, but we still made good money. Uh, but it's very important to be able to learn to be able to um, adjust your trading strategies to the market at hand. We're still bearish, even though we've had a nice bounce, but we're, we, we, it seems like we're getting closer to the market, bottoming out from the bearish and turning into a bullish trending market. And, and we will change our strategies quite a bit at that point in time. Um, I, I like, like I'm trying to teach members most effective use of the compass and dominator systems, um, educate members on identifying and trading the highest probability trade setups while being patient. This is really important. We, 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 as I've said many times, we're, our objective here is not to make trades. Our objective as a trader is to make money. That's number one. We want to be able to make money. So we don't really care about taking trades unless that trade gives us the highest probability of being profitable. We're going to, so we're, that's why I always say we trade the best and we skip the rest uh, because you don't want to be out there taking trades that, that are, are 60 or 65 or 70 percent likely to win because it, it, there's too many chances of those things going against you. Um, and I like to ac accomplish these goals in a relatively low stress and disciplined environment. Um, I've been in a lot of rooms and a lot of scalping rooms and hyper scalping rooms, very, very stressful. Uh, you know, there's obvious, obviously there's always stress in trading because it's, you know, you've got money at risk. So you're, you're, you're going to have some stress, but I'm, but what I'm trying to do is, is have a room that has a relatively low stress and disciplined environment, no frenetic trading or frenetic panicking over trades. we look at everything very logically, uh, very disciplined. And, uh, and th that's, that's, uh, trading as in a calm state of mind is, is much more better, is much better. Than, than being uh, really uh, hyped up on the trade. Trading should not be um, an adrenaline producing uh, uh, business. Uh, that, that's, that's a burnout situation. The trading should be very methodical and disciplined and it, it should not be exciting. Um, you know, making money is nice, but it, it should, if, if, you, if you're getting emotionally involved in the trade and you're really, you're really excited, it's, whether, it's, whether it's losses or gains, you want to try to take that out of your trading. So that's why I want to do low stress and a disciplined environment. Um, again, just a re re quick recap of the 2022 trading environment. I, I won't do this again next week, but I, I know some new people and I just wanted to cover it. Uh, we had a, a, a year long bear market, worse since 2008 financial crisis. The most difficult trading environment in many, many years and many, many traders that I know who were full-time traders uh, gave it up in 2022. They, they couldn't take it. They lost too much money. They blew up their accounts, uh, but they just couldn't trade anymore. Uh, again, many retail traders were not able to adjust the trading strategies and their mindset, and they blew up their accounts or simply gave up. Uh, you know, a lot of traders have been trading in a bull market for years and years, 
and bear market comes along and they just keep trading the same way uh, and, and that that was the end of a lot of them. And swing trading was particularly difficult because of the many gaps at the open and the violent bear market rallies that we had. You know, markets trending down, but you get these very vicious uh, rallies in a bear market. And if you're short with, with short swings, those gap ups can kill you. And that's why trades, swing trading was so high. And I, I will point out, if you survive the 2022 trading environment, you're well positioned to be a consistently profitable, uh, profitable trader uh, going forward. It was, a, it was a, a very harsh environment to learn to trade, but if you can trade in, in that environment, you can trade in any environment. Uh, this is just a quick re performance recap of 2022. Uh, all of our live room trades, uh, we had uh, 340 total, uh, 298 wins, 45 losses, um, so 86% win rate, um, profit factor 2.16, which is, which is very good. Uh, Live room trade using the compass only. I, what I've done is looked at the trades from October, uh, October, November, December. And the reason I did that was the dominator system became available in the first, first part of October. And I was using the compass system and the dominator system in conjunction starting in October. So when I look at this, I'm looking at compass only. What that means is uh, the, the only, we were lined up on the compass system, but we did not have uh, the dominator system um, in our favor at the time. It, it wasn't against us. In other words, we, we, if we were trading long, the, the, the dominated system didn't have buy signals, but it didn't have sell sell signals. It was neutral. So this is just using the compass system and the dominated system wasn't giving us um, confirmation, but it also wasn't giving us it to tell, tell us not to. And we had 151 total trades, 135 wins, 89.4% um, win rate, They're pretty nice. Uh, with 14 losses, which was 9% and two scratches. Profit factor 3.57. So you see, uh, starting in, in October, we're actually, uh, our profit factor is actually going up um, uh, from what it was the first part of the year uh, as we get better and better at using the highest probability trade setups. Uh, the live room using the compass and dominator in combination. This is, again, we use the compass system and every time we took a trade, when the dominator system was also in agreement, we had 123 trades, so fewer trades, about 30 trades fewer, but we had 119 wins, uh, which was a 96.7 astronomical win rate, uh, and three losses. I, I seriously doubt we can maintain that kind of a win rate, but the, that's 119 wins out of 123 when they lined up was extremely uh, impressive, it, to, even to me. I mean, it was really great. Profit factor of 12.41, which is sky high uh, on those trades. Now the spy super system, and these were beta tests. I hadn't called these out in the rooms, but this this the spy super system is basically the same as this, uh, using the compass system and the dominator system together, but on on the spy on the SPY index. Uh, so I'd be trading puts and calls on the spy, and what we would have is the dominator system giving us buy signals uh, on the market internals. The compass system tell us that telling us that the spy was a was a buy. It'd be a green across the board on the spy. Uh, on the five minute chart and also that the we were bouncing off a of support or, re, or resistance level buying at support selling at resistance uh, and that is a spy super system and a lot of these trades don't last an awful long time but we did 100 trades 86 wins 10 losses but notice the profit factor here 14.17 so even though we only have an, an 86 i say only we have an 86 percent win rate that's still very high but the profit factor was higher because of the fact that you, we, because we were trading the SPY so quickly, we would, we would cut our losses more quickly and we'd have much bigger winners than losers, that, which is why that profit factor was up there at 1417. Um, this is a, just some information on put credit spreads as a, uh, a video I have on that. Um, this is a post on using debit spreads as profitable day trades. Um, Heikinachi candles. This is a link to the library. Uh, I have lots and lots of videos in the library using the compass, using the compass system to find the highest probability trade setups, uh, using the compass and dominated system combined to find the highest probability trade setups. There is a, a, a video on uh, what I call a funnel, which is basically just showing you the criteria that we use. Basically, you take your prospect, prop it into the funnel, and if it comes out the bottom, meaning that most of the most of the criteria has been met, then it becomes a, a becomes a trade. 
and there's there's a lot of, I have a lot of videos out there. I went on doing time spreads over earnings, put credit spreads, uh, doing debit spreads for the for weekly uh, weekly profits. Uh, quite a few trades. The, the Compass system um, indicators and and, um, and how you use them and what they mean and, and how to use them in trading. Just a lot of those. So if you get time, go there. I try to keep the videos to you know 25 30 minutes so that they're they're you know fairly small chunks that you can uh, you not going to get hopefully you're not going to get bored too quickly. Now these are some of the stocks I'm watching for tomorrow. Um, XOM these are bullish XOM long, BKI short. I'm sorry, BKI long, TEX long, ETN long, and CDW long. These are the five that I saw tonight that look pretty good. Short side BTI, JD looks very good short, MGA, HOLX, and Shake Shack. Those are the ones I like. Uh, you know, for, for overnight, I don't have any idea how they're going to open in the morning, but these are the ones I'll be one of them, something I'm going to be watching. Um, and again, the, the entry criteria of these, if you're looking for long entries, on any stocks you want to you want to see them break over Friday's high with a high probability trade setup for shorts you want them to break below Friday's low with a high probability trade setup and try to take trades that are, are trading with the market trend if there is one markets uh, this is Sunday night the market's down a little bit right now but not an awful lot the market's down a little bit we'll see how where it opens in the morning so anyway, anyway that's the uh, periscope for this week uh, I appreciate you taking the time to uh, to listen to the video I appreciate uh, all the time and effort you guys have uh, have put into the room, putting in your comments and questions. Uh, make sure that you you participate in the Discord room that we have. Uh, we have two traders, Dr. No and Savvy Trader, that are in there all day long, posting the trades we talk about and the trades we take. And uh, they also post charts of of stocks that you may be interested in, or if Savvy Trader sees a trade that he he is is looking to take, uh, he goes in and he posts some really detailed information about about the specific trade based on the chart, his criteria for it, and it gives you a nice list like that. Very, very helpful if you're trying to learn why particular trades are high probability trade setups. So make sure you go in the Discord room and, and take advantage of that. It's a, it's, it's, it's a huge, huge benefit uh, to the members in the room. And if you're not on the Compass system and or the Dominator system, I highly suggest uh, you, you, you get it. Uh, the Compass system and the Dominator system, either one or both, I mean, they're they're one-time investments. You only have to buy the Compass system one time and the Dominator system one time. You own it for the rest of your life. You'll get all the updates for it. Um, and I've got a couple of new uh, uh, scanners that, that I'm working on with, with Sergio that uh, I would like to be able to release pretty soon too. So if, you're, if you own those uh, pieces of software, you get the scanners um, with it and you get any new scans that come along uh, for the rest, of the rest of the time you own it, which is as long as you want to trade because you want it forever. So again, have a great evening, everybody, or day or afternoon, wherever you're listening to this. And I look forward to seeing everybody in the room on Monday morning. And uh, let's all make some money tomorrow.